Well, I guess I'm going to put you on the hot seat with my next question, but I, I really think it's necessary. Uh, it's no secret that open-air preachers, campus preachers, they've gained themselves a reputation of being vulgar, I feel, and sexually explicit to such a degree that it's almost an embarrassment for my wife, or I would not want them to hear some of the things that I've heard. Uh, and I'll be just quite frank, I've been repulsed by some of the locker room talk that I've heard. But, you know, I'm not saying that I think that an open-air preacher shouldn't preach against sexual sins, because Jesus did. Right. Um, one only has three to fifth chapter of the book of Matthew, and uh, just different places. Christ said that if a man look on a woman and lust after her, he hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. I know, I understand that. The Apostle Paul preached against sexual immorality, so... I believe it's necessary, so please don't take me wrong with this, where I'm going to go with this. Uh, with that said, Jesus and the Apostle Paul didn't get pornographic with their conversation either. And so, you know, you go back 20 years ago, the open-air preacher, the campus preacher, they could get away with murder. They could say anything and everything and get away with it, and a lot of them did. Mm. But we're not living in the same generation with YouTube and GodTube and these different vehicles to put any home video you know that you've got you not going to say anything unnoticed it's going to be on there and I'll be honest I get angry when I see a college student take 15 or 20 hours of preaching that a, a campus preachers done that week and they uh, edit it down to 10 minutes of nothing but the most controversial things that you could possibly say and you know I mean you can just take a quick stroll through YouTube and even search your name out everything that comes up it's going to be about sexual immorality and it's going to be the most provocative things that you guys ever say. And that, that bothers me and it misrepresents a lot of open-air preachers. But really, do you expect anything different from heathen, from sinners, the unconverted? They hate God, they hate the gospel, and they hate you. And so they're going to misrepresent you. So I guess this year is where I'll direct the question to you, Brother Armstrong. I, some time ago I was... Uh, viewing uh, one of the videos that a uh, college student had made concerning you and I'll be quite honest the things that I heard you say shocked me mm. and as a pastor it bothered me now it was earlier in the year somewhere in January but now the reason it shocked me was because you and I we've been together a lot preaching we preached the St. Pete Pride Parade Shane Parade whatever you want to call it we preached the Moans Venus. We've been to Plant City and preached, you know, just street preaching out there at the barber shop, and numerous times in, in Ebor City, the castle. We've been attacked together. We've shielded each other and protected each other. So it's not just been a one-time thing, Brother Armstrong. I know you guys. We've preached many times. I've never heard you use the type of dialogue that I heard on that video, and it, it bothered me, just to be honest with you. But then when I've spent as much time with you as I have, and I've not heard these sort of things. I mean, yes, you preach against sexual immorality uh, and th those sort of issues, and I, I have no problem with that. I think in this sex-soaked you know, society we live in, you've got to preach against sexual sins. But uh, I guess what I'm saying is I, I've, it appears to me that there's been a change in perhaps your dialogue. I mean, you still preach against sexual sins, of course, but I, I haven't heard you use that explicit dialogue as you were on those videos. And so my question is, have you changed your dialogue? And if so, tell us why you felt it was necessary to use that explicit dialogue in the past and what influenced you to change that dialogue and to not say certain things anymore. Okay. <clears throat> well, uh, first off, I have not always used the best judgment in every situation. You know, you're out there five hours a day. Uh, people are trying to tangle you in your talk. They're trying to back you in a corner and get you to say. Now, so, you know, I've, I've made mistakes. You know, I've said things that I wish I hadn't have said. You know, I've done things I wish I hadn't have done. We all you know, have. Little, you know, I mean, little things. Uh, now, when I started out, uh, I had seen other campus preachers, open air preachers, do things like that. And they seem to have 
you know, the hand of God on them. They were right about most things. And so I just followed their example. Now, that was never, that was never uh, a staple of, of my pre... It was never an emphasis or anything. It wasn't something that I would, you know, uh, make it a main point. Or, or just uh, use it uh, as a subject to preach on all the time or whatever. Right. But, you know, with, it with, sure with, appears, with the society... It sure appears that way with the YouTube, you know, and the way they are. So. With the society uh, that we live in and all this confusion over over gender, uh, transgender, uh, homosexuals, yeah, you know, and sexual acts and stuff like this, uh, the subject of sex and stuff like that would come up and, you know, they'd back you in a corner and then push you to the wall and then, you know, I would say things that I wish I hadn't have said. Right. You know, that I thought right. at the time uh, was witty and, you know... And acceptable because of your influence. And I'd seen other, and I'd seen other, other campus preachers I've do seen. it. Okay. You know, and so I figured... But, you know, I... And not only with that, but there's just there's been a lot of things that I've that, that I've opened my eyes that you got to be real careful about following uh, everything that other people do. Yeah. I, when you when you respect people and and, and, and you admire uh, what them and what they've done in, in the past and who they are, uh, it's it's real easy to think that everything they're doing. Is okay. Now, so it never was an emphasis or anything like that. Uh, how, as I went on and on and on, uh, I, I began to see that a lot of that was was totally unnecessary and detrimental. Uh, it was. It, I, I never, I never needed it anyways. Uh, I would just, I just did it because I saw other people do it. Right. Well, I appreciate your honesty on that.